Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching the Today I Found Our YouTube channel. And in the video today, we're looking at what causes strokes. A stroke, known in the medical field as a cerebral vascular accident (CVA) or brain attack, is more or less a heart attack for the brain. Like any organ in the body, the brain needs blood to supply it with oxygen and nutrients. Should this blood flow become blocked by a clot or emboli, or the rupture of a blood vessel, the cells that occupy that area of the brain begin to die. Although every person has a different presentation, some of the most common symptoms of a stroke include trouble speaking, slurred speech, weakness or paralysis of one side or both sides of the body, altered mental status, vision problems, or headache. There are two types of strokes, ischemic and hemorrhagic. Ischemic strokes are the most common type, accounting for nearly 80% of all strokes. This type of stroke is caused by a blockage of an artery that leads to the brain or smaller specific area of the brain. Ischemia simply means a deficiency of blood supply produced by a vasoconstriction or local obstacles to the arterial flow. Thus, the term ischemic stroke. Blood clots are the leading cause of these blockages. However, anything that can block the blood vessel, like an air bubble, a tumor, constriction of the blood vessel, or rarely a foreign object, can result in an ischemic stroke. Treatment for ischemic strokes involves removing or reducing the blockage. If this is not done quick enough and the cells in that area of the brain die, the only option left is physical therapy to try to increase the function of the body area affected. If doctors have the opportunity to treat the stroke in a timely manner, there are two therapies they can try. The first is to use thrombolytics, clot-dissolving drugs like Activase. Using a protein called Tissue Plasminogen Activator (TPA), this type of drug breaks down clots, allowing blood to begin flowing again. Using this drug has its own problems. The first is that they require administration within three hours of the onset of symptoms. Although some studies have suggested that doctors can give the drug under certain circumstances within six hours. The second complication is that this drug will break down all the clots in your body, not just the ones in your brain. So, as you would expect, the chance of unwanted bleeding is very good. The second treatment attempts to get around the unwanted bleeding problem. It uses a type of interventional radiology, basically an image-guided surgery, called local intra-arterial thrombolysis. This is basically taking a TPA and using a wire-guided delivery system, putting the drug directly onto the unwanted clot. This treatment also comes with a short window of effectiveness and is best used within four hours of the onset of symptoms. Hemorrhagic strokes account for the other 20% of strokes. This type also results in blood flow to an area of the brain being interrupted. Instead of the artery being blocked, though, it bursts open and the blood leaks out and does not get transported to the cells of the brain. Hemorrhagic strokes come in two varieties, intracerebral and subarachnoid. Intracerebral simply means that an artery within the brain itself ruptures. Not only do the cells downstream of the break begin to die, but blood gets introduced into the brain and causes the area around the bleed to compress the brain tissue, resulting in further damage. Subarachnoid hemorrhage is also a rupture of an artery within the skull. The difference is where the bleed occurs. Instead of happening within the brain itself, it happens in the area surrounding it. The skull does not allow for the blood to escape, so it puts pressure on the brain, causing damage. Doctors have two choices when it comes to treating a hemorrhagic stroke fix it with surgery, or let it resolve on its own. In an effort to keep this video less than the short lifetime a neurosurgeon goes to school for, I will not go into all the factors that lead a doctor to decide between surgery or the wait-and-see approach. I will simply say that if surgery can be avoided, it will be. So I really hope you found that video interesting and informative. If you did, please do give us a like below and don't forget to subscribe for brand new videos every day. Also, over there on the right are a couple of other videos you'll probably enjoy if you enjoyed this one. And thank you for watching.